Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest in his entrepreneurial journey is really going to be fascinating. I'm really excited to talk to him. But before we do that, I would be remiss if I did not properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Six Sigma, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And if you're not automating your Craigslist postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm excited. How are you? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed by today's guest, actually. Yeah, um, I mean, this is, uh, is going to be a fun one. Yeah, I don't, I don't always, you know, I've, I've kind of gotten used to not being the smartest guy in the room, but now I'm a little intimidated. <laughs> so, you know, let's talk to today's guest. But before we do, let me plug today's podcast is sponsored by Lone Geek. LoneGeek.io, automate your notes in getting paid. It's a set it and forget it system. Don't be like me and spend your Sundays manually putting into a spreadsheet all those payments. Now it's a set it and forget it automated system. Collect credit cards, collect ACH, learn more at LoneGeek.io. All right. Are we ready? Jason Swank from jasonswank.com. How are you? Doing good, man. How about you guys? Good. If you don't know who Jason Swank is, he's a big deal. Okay. He is the owner or the, the, the host of two crazy big podcasts, the Smart Agency Masterclass podca- podcast dedicated to providing tactics and strategies to agency owners and decision makers that cut through the BS, focus on exactly what works and what doesn't, and the hashtag Ask Swank Show, a live broadcast with questions and rapid fire answers about agencies, marketing, entrepreneurship, and business based on a lifetime of building successful multi-million dollar companies. So Jason has, has basically like done the entrepreneurial things, done, he's worked with big companies. He's been seen in Entrepreneur and Inc. Magazine. Um, Jason, you're a big deal. How did you become such a big deal? I don't know deal? about that. <laughs> <laughs> I just worked my butt off. That's all. <laughs> so kind of, kind of let's rewind the, the tape a bit and, and tell us how you started and, and how you became sort of the, the guy that agencies go to. Yeah. Well, it all started in 90, 1999. I had um, one of my best friends look like Justin Timberlake. And so uh, – I, uh, <laughs> I didn't like the band uh, NSYNC back then. So I created a website called In Shit kind of with all my friends and ca- created a fake uh, band, fake tour, fake music, everything. And it got popular and people started asking me to design websites. And so that's kind of how I got my start. I didn't even know what it, like I remember my first client asked me to send him an invoice. I didn't even know what a freaking invoice was. And obviously Google wasn't around. So I had to all figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> So, and, but then, you know, from there, you started working with Arthur Anderson. Um, and they're a, big, they're a big five consulting firm, yeah, right? The paper shredding company, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why do you call it the paper shredding company? Well, that's, what, that's what they did with Enron. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah Enron, right. Yeah. I, I walked in and saw someone shredding papers and kind of filmed them. No, I'm just kidding. That wasn't me. Yeah. When I, when I, uh, when I was in college, I, I actually worked for Ernst and Young. Okay. Oh, yeah. Which is a competitor to was a competitor. And, um, my job, one of my first jobs there was I was, I worked in the mailroom and I had to shred. So there was like literally this room, this room where all the shredding documents would go into. And like, I'd go in there and you start to shred. I mean, you're talking about massive shredders. So, I mean, yeah, they'll, they'll chop your arm off. I'm extremely sure dusty in there and everything, man. You come out like you're covered in shredding dust. So, can you, can you only imagine like Anderson and the shredder that they had? <laughs> they had monster big, big shredders. So. Yeah. They eat you alive. So, so, when did you start your own business? Uh, 99. So, I worked for Arthur Anderson for about six months. And, uh, you know, I was always built to own my own business. I mean, even from, when I was 12 years old, I, I had a, a lawn care business. My tagline was I beat everybody by a yard. So I was always creative back then. 
And then I, I, I always joked with my wife and my kids when we were watching Dirty Jobs. I literally had all of those jobs from like going in the marshes and getting golf balls and selling them back to the golfers to, you know, um, going on swamp boats and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I always wanted to be my own boss. And so I worked for someone for six months and realized that I wanted to kill myself. I couldn't do it anymore. And, uh, and then my, my ticket was, you know, creating websites. Crazy. So what do you think you learned when you look back now at all those dirty jobs? What, <laughs> what, what are some of the, the, the things that you really got out of it? And, you know, would you want your own children to follow that path? Yeah. That's, that's two questions. Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest thing is, is learning what people actually want and need, right? And being able to offer it to them, right? The golfers needed their golf balls back because they sucked. And so I provided a service to them. Uh, same thing with, you know, mowing their yards and that kind of stuff. And, and I mean, you just got to get kind of creative. You know, my kids have already kind of started down that path. I remember they um, had this electric green tractor um, that all our, I guess, kids have. And um, they wanted to make money to get some Legos. So they literally made a moot, like a, uh, uh, a food truck for lemonade or a lemonade truck <laughs> drove it around and made some money. So they're already starting young. I love it. I love it. Scott, Todd, do you make your kids work? I know you do. I know you do. I know you make your daughter work. Well, I, I do. And, but you know what? Still, it's not, it's not the same, you know, J Jason talked about like, you know, mowing, mowing lawn drill, right? I mean, I started the same place, you know, like I was out pushing the lawnmower hustling and, that's just not, it's weird. I think it's this thing in, in our society today. Cause I just don't, I just don't see it. Maybe it's the neighborhood I live in or something, but you know, my, I just don't see the kids hustling to, to uh, mow the lawn. You know, I think that back in the day you talk to other you know people that maybe are older than us and you know, their, their first, their first job was the paper route, you know, and then the paper route got picked up by the, by the, by the adults. And then the lawn, then we all moved into lawn care. And now the lawn chairs being handled by the adults. So I, I don't know, like, you know, I try to find jobs to put my you know kids to work to teach them, but it's still not the same, I think, as it was back growing up. And I, I, I don't know. I loved my paper route. That was so much fun. And especially after watching the movie Rad, if there, anybody ever remembers that. I, I uh, like when I, when I started like out, I remember I, uh, I did have this small paper route, but it was selling this newspaper door to door is called grit G R I T. And they would mail you like you would tell them like, okay, I want, I want 20 of these to be mailed to me. And it came out once a week and they would mail you the 20 they were all rolled up. And then you, know, you put it in your little bag and you would literally go door to door and you would sell the, the grit newspapers. And I think they were like a dollar at the time or something. And you know, I got to keep like 50 cents. And once a week, I either had to return all the documents, like all the papers and like the covers of them, of the ones I didn't sell, or I had to send them their 50 cents and they would keep it going. So you want to talk about like accountability, like, man, you had to know inventory control. You had to like get outside your comfort zone and go knocking on doors, you know, the stranger danger kind of a deal. Yeah. And my, like my, my mom, you know, was very, very protective something like, Hey, you want to go sell newspapers or door? Go ahead. You know, but I couldn't leave the street if I was riding my bike. <laughs> so I'm like literally walking all over the neighborhood selling these newspapers door to door. And I'll tell you, there's something about knocking on doors that really just gets you out of your comfort zone. It's, it's, it's a very interesting kind of approach. Yeah. I sold uh, telecommunications and uh, I used to have to try to get by all the gatekeepers. And this is how I learned how to sell at the agency. And I, you know, I'd always say, hey, I'm selling telephone service to see if we can you know, save you some bucks. So I started making up something. Hey, we upgraded the fiber loop in your area and I need to talk to someone <laughs> in the telecom. And I got in every time and they were like, this is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So fast forward to today, Jason, and how, how big is your agency? I was a little over 100. A, a little over 100? People. 100 people. Okay, so now how do you manage hundred people uh, very carefully and hire the right people um, and then you know set a set structure you know in order to you know manage everything so like I looked at my job you know toward kind of the when we were really successful 
you know, my job was a, a couple different roles. Like I set the vision and direction of the, the business. I coach and mentored my leadership team only, and then they did their team and then their team and so on, right? So you have to create different levels. And then I understand the financials, be the front person for the, you know, the business and then, you know, uh, build, you know, strategic partnerships. So that was my role. Uh, that's how I did it. Don't you think most entrepreneurs have a, have a hard time at scaling because at some point they have to let go? Yeah. They, they, well, I, I hear all the time, which is kind of complete BS is like, well, no one's as good as me. I'm like, yeah, they're a lot better than you, I promise. But you just haven't created a process or documented it. And then, or you haven't created the right kind of clarity or vision of where the, the business is actually going. And if you don't do this, like this is the hardest part because everybody kind of starts in business by accident, like the in shit days, right? Like someone offered me money for a website. I said, hell yeah. And I didn't know anything else. Like. I didn't know I should register with the business or whatever. And for a number of different years, I didn't have that vision of what did I want to create? Who do I serve? How do, where do I want to take this so I can communicate this to my team? Because if you can't communicate that to your team, then your team's going to make decisions what's best for them rather than what's best for the business. Scott Todd, what do you think? You know, I, um, I was listening to a, a different podcast and they, they talked to uh, Derek Sivers and uh, you know, he, he was really to the point where he could not, he did not want to be like, he created the, 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 uh, the website CD baby and he didn't want to be involved in all this stuff. So it was kind of like, he talked about how he went back and started to build these systems and really it went down to him constantly communicating the way that, the way that he, like his philosophy behind everything. So someone would ask for a refund and they would come run to him. What do we do? And so he kept, he kept articulating to them like, okay, it, it doesn't matter if, if, you know, I would give them a refund or not. I want them to be happy. So what would you do? <laughs> you know? So like, it wasn't necessarily about documenting the way that he wanted them to handle every single thing. It was more about constantly documenting or sharing communicating the the philosophies that he had about business as a in general and then he would go back and and they would the employees would begin to kind of put that into their own kind of unwritten uh you know stories if you will and it kind of goes back to like you know Nordstrom's Nordstrom's there's this you know myth that okay you know someone went to Nordstrom's and returned some tires that they bought somewhere and you know whether that's true or not it kind of sets the tone. It's the, the, the fable that says, Hey, this is the way we take care of our customers. We will take back tires even if we didn't sell it to them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so Jason, you've got core values that drive mm -hmm. your behaviors. You got passion, people with passion can do anything, think differently, love, help and serve our customers. The team is our greatest asset, make decisions, take action, deliver results, educate and entertain, pursue growth, learning every day document and share your knowledge, celebrate wins, right? Mm -hmm. of, of those core values, which one do you think if you took it away, would everything would just go away? The team, like your the team is your greatest asset. The yeah. team is our greatest asset. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you say document and share your knowledge, how are you actually doing that? Yeah. So, I mean, before anybody, you know, comes to work for me in the past or even now, like, you know, it's about documenting everything. So like, let's say I'm doing something and I say to myself, why the hell am I doing this? This is not what I need to be doing. Well, I'm going to videotape me doing it one more time and then I'm going to create a video library so that anybody coming in, they can watch all the videos and get up to speed before their day even starts or their day one starts. Like when, Stacy came to work for me, who's my director of growth now. Before she even started, she was productive because she understood everything that we were doing and what she needed to do at that current role that she came in on. So, you know, that, that's, that's what we're doing. How, how do you find great people? What, what do you look for? What, what defines greatness for you? Well, it's all, it's different for everybody, right? So if anybody ever likes to dress up in a tie and be real corporate and that kind of stuff, I am not the person to work for. All right. I'm like, 
come in with spiky hair, flip flops, ripped jeans, you know, we'll get along great. So, you know, it's, it's about measuring. That's why I define my core values. Right. And that's why I did that at the agency. That's why we got one of the best, we got the best place to work in Atlanta. So, you know, you have to do that because you're not hiring your duplicate, right? If you do, you're going to be really disappointed. You're hiring people that believe in something that you believe. That's why when you set your values and you set your vision of where you're going, you want to make sure that matches up and you put those right people in the right seat. And then you, you want to find based on the role. So if you're hiring like a project manager, they're real detail oriented. Like I am not right. Everybody listening is probably a, a visionary, right? Everybody, we could talk for hours about ideas and ideas, but you suck at execution. So you need to find, you need to figure out what you're good at, what you're bad at, and then hire people for that. So it's different for everybody. Scott, when you are hiring, what, what what's your litmus test as far as this person's going to fit well with land modo or. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that, I think that it's um, important that, you, you kind of let people fly, right? You know, like, I don't, I don't want to be a micromanager. I don't enjoy that. I don't want to be, I'm hiring them. So as Jason said, so that I don't have to do it again. You know, I want them to be able to do it and they don't have to do it in the exact way that I do it. So what I like to do is I will record a video like Jason said, and I'll record it for the last time. And then I'll let someone else go and do it. And I want to see that they're going to at least put themselves out there to, to do it. If, if they won't, if they won't even, you know, try because they don't understand it and they're afraid of making a mistake, it's not, it's not the right, you know, it's not the right component. I need somebody who's going to, to do, or at least try to do because that person that's at least trying is, is coachable. The person that's locked up and not going to do it at all is not the right fit for me at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, so Jason, do you have a, a morning ritual, like an entrepreneurial morning ritual that, that sort of drives you for the rest of your day? Because I can imagine, you know, dealing with 100 employees has got to be stressful at some point. So what, do, you have, do you have a ritual? And if you do, what is it? Yeah, well, I always go work out in the morning. But I have more of a, a ritual at night. Um, that kind of sets me up for the rest of the next day. So I ask myself kind of five questions. I ask, have I helped anybody? Did I learn anything? Right. Um, what, uh, am I prepared for tomorrow? Um, did I give it my all? And, and, and when you, when you ask yourself all these, then you're like, okay, well, did I give it my all? Probably not. Well, what can I do a little bit more? Or did I learn anything? Because if you're not always learning, even if you get to the top of the mountain, they're like, it's lonely at the top. So you always got to think about what's the next top. So you're always wanting to learn because everybody's always trying to knock you off. All right. And then the other thing is, is like, can I, have I helped anybody? I mean, that's the whole thing, you know, who cares about being successful? It's about being significant and making other people successful, regard, you know, whether it be your family or other people that you're actually serving. And so, and then the, the last one I ask is kind of, am I prepared for tomorrow? Because we all get nervous or stressed when you're not prepared. So I want, I want to make sure I'm setting myself up right. And then I guess the last question on number five is, is what am I grateful for? Um, so when you think of like, what am I grateful for? Then you can't really focus on the negative thing. So you're going to bed on a good track and you usually get up on a good track. I, I love that. I love that. Scott, do you do you something similar at night? What do you do at night? Uh, basically what I'll do is, is, uh, I, twice a day, I write down the, the five, five goals that I want to achieve. It's not always the same goal, but it's like the bigger picture stuff. So it may change even from the morning to the night. So I can, a thought, you know, like, okay, I want to have this, or I want to have that, or this, I want this in my life. And I'll write it down as if I have already achieved it. And then, um, so constantly I'm writing down those goals and I'm thinking bigger picture stuff. And so maybe, maybe it's, you know, very, very similar. I mean, I think you'll get the same kind of results. Um, you know, I, I think it's just thinking, you know, always looking forward to something as opposed to, Oh, look at what happened to me today, or this is not the best day. It's, it's really about keeping your eyes forward and, you know, on the bigger picture stuff. 
Yeah, it's interesting. I just something kind of similar. I have uh, five questions. I, I use this app called Grid Diary, and it can make like questions up. And I, I try to keep it as simple as possible. So first thing I do in the morning um, is, you know, I'll meditate and then I'll kind of journal and kind of get my, my uh, morning curmudgeon out, if you will, and then have a cup of coffee. And then while I'm having co- coffee, I'll, I'll ask myself, what three things would make today great? Right. And I'll write down what, what three things would just make today great. And then what, then I write, what am I grateful for? And then I, I would write, but I, I kind of, you know, narrow it down because I don't want to just make it like this to-do list, like my family, my kids, my health. Right. I, I mean, I really kind of think about at this moment, what am I grateful for? And I, you know, what three things am I most grateful for at that moment? And it changes kind of every day. Right. And then at the end of the day, I'll write, how do I feel today? And then I wrote three th- amazing things that happened today. And then what problem do I want my unconscious to solve? So if I've got a problem or a, there's a business issue or, or something before, usually I'll, I'll, I'll think about that like around six o'clock before dinner and I'll write that. And I'll, then I won't think about it again. And I'll kind of let my unconscious try to solve it that, that next day. And um, I find that very, very helpful. Um, so I, I, you know, it's, that, that's kind of like my process, but I think it's kind of similar, Jason, that, to what you do and, and Scott, mm-hmm. it's just a little bit different. So Jason, as far as, you know, like, uh, like a book you would recommend, let's say, to, <laughs> to help somebody scale. And there's only one book you could have. Is there one, is there something you would recommend? <laughs> so I, I don't read books. Um, I can't stand, I just, I guess I have the attention disorder. So, um, but I listen to podcasts and, and, and watch videos. I mean, that's how I uh, keep up to date on everything. What, what, what podcasts help you scale besides your own? Uh, yeah, my, mine. Uh, no, uh, I like Tony Robbins uh, podcast. I think that's really good. And then um, I used to listen to uh, Pat Flynn's when I was first getting started. So I think it would be really good for a lot of you guys, listeners of the Smart Passive Income one so hence. yeah he's great i think he's great i think both those yeah. podcasts are great scott have you listened to the you know the one of those guys uh pat flynn uh passive income smart passive income yeah um you know I, i'll listen to um i'll i'll listen to like grant cardone stuff and i'll also listen to uh tim ferris stuff on occasion um just you know for different different perspectives <laughs> I've been always, uh, I've never listened to Tim's or I've never met him, so I don't know, but I always kind of laugh at kind of like how he wrote a book on like the four hour work week. I'm like, that's horseshit, <laughs> but well, it's good marketing. It, it, you know, it's funny because um, I, I was just listening, I had a long drive yesterday and I was just listening to a podcast and someone brought that up, you know, about like the, the whole four hour work week. And he was basically saying, you know, like, look, um, it's not necessarily about really working four hours a week. It's about you know, if you're doing work that you love, there you go. It, it might seem like you're only working four hours a week, you know, like it's really about give, giving yourself a lifestyle. It's about creating the lifestyle that you want. And like, if, it, if it's down to you working four hours a week, great. But he, he, he self-confessed he doesn't work four hours a week. You know, he's working much more than that. Uh, but I think what he's done is he's created a lifestyle that he wants. And um, that's really the, the mission. So, I agree. You know, like you look at you like, ah, this guy's ridiculous. He's like, uh, you know, just this typical, you know, marketing dude. It's just his, his claim to fame is just this damn book that, you know, he's made a lot of money on. What else has he done in life? But the guy's got an interesting story. Yeah, now that you explained, I'm gonna go listen to it now. Yeah. yeah, I was like, is, is this just another charlatan out there? Of going, <laughs> you know, yeah. like reaching that because there's so good. much of that crap out there. Yeah. And, I'm glad to hear that. So that's good. So Jason, you, um, you've been kind of quoted out, you know, about the fact that there's 12, um, 12 systems that you think that every business owner should master. What, what are they? What are those 12 well, systems? Well, I've actually narrowed them down to eight because uh, 12 matter. was just too much. Right. And so it's kind of like the four minute ad. Now it's down to the two minute ad. Right. It's like, the, it's like the four hour work week. Four hour work week down to two hour work week. That's what I'm going to do, right? <laughs> the, seven, the seven minute workout to six minutes. I'm going to beat you, Tim. Two minute work, work week. 
Um, so really the first system is clarity, right? Knowing where you want to go, how you want to get, you know, you know, not how to get there, but where you want to go, who you want to serve and coming up with those goals, right? Just like I kind of explained the very beginning. The next system that every business owner needs is kind of, you know, the, the positioning, right? Everybody positions themselves the wrong way. And if, and they come in order too, right? If you don't know where you're going, you don't know how to position yourself. And everybody's been positioning themselves as the, the star in their own story, right? And it's actually the wrong way to look at it. Like if you go to my website, you don't, even on my about page, you don't see my story until you have to scroll way the freaking down, right? Because I don't want to be the star. I want the visitor. I want the person experiencing to be the star because if you put yourself as a star, you're going to make them Robin in the Batman story, right? If you're Batman, they're Robin. And I always joke around with people that no one wants to wear those green tights. Like who wants, who wants to grow up being Robin? No one. But what you have to do is you have to position yourself as that trusted advisor, right? Because in any story, right, that hero or that star has a problem and then that advisor helps. So you got to kind of switch that and, and, um, and change that up. The next one is, is what are you offering and what's the right offer at the right time, right? Because now that you know where you're going, you're positioned to be the choice rather than a choice. Now it's about how do we figure out what's the right offering, okay? Because everybody's pitching kind of marriage right off the bat, no matter what you're doing, you're like, buy my uh, $1,500 program. I'm like you haven't built up any trust or $10,000 program. What can you give me a value first that's a little easier to digest? You go, yeah, you know what you're doing, and that helped me, and I'll go to the next level. Then after you have those three, then you can go into prospecting, which is your lead generation. But everybody jumps into the lead generation right off the bat, and they don't know where the hell they're going. They, they're positioned totally wrong, right? They're positioned like uh, that sleazy sales guy, right? Right off the bat going, buy from me, you'll get a thousand leads. I'm like, you're a scumbag, right? And then you, you have the right offer. So then, and then in the prospecting, you got to kind of look at it within any business. You have to have an outbound channel, an inbound channel, and a strategic partnership channel in order to really kind of scale to the next level, not just rely on Facebook or AdWords because that's working really well. That could go down any time. They could change an algorithm and you'd be screwed. So you got to have multiple channels. And then after the prospecting, you have the sales system, right? You got to, depending on your business, right? You got to figure out like, uh, am I talking to the right prospect? Um, how do I get their budget to make sure I'm doing that? Are they the authority? What's their timing? Um, you know, what's my proposal process, all of that. The next system also, and this is more, you know, my systems that I create are more for professional service firms. Um, but the next one is the delivery, right? What's your onboarding look like? How do we make sure we delivered what we promised? Um, how do we streamline that to make more profit? Um, and then really after that, there's the operations to make sure that you're charging the right amount. Like what should you actually be charging? Um, you know, making sure that you have the right org structure and the report structure. Um, how are you managing cash flow? Are you doing, you know, cash flow, um, you know, projections? Because, you know, like we were talking um, in the pre-show, you know, we we're literally two weeks away from just going to sayonara because um, I looked at the bank account. That's how I always make my, my budgeting and my planning. And I looked and I was like, my gosh, we're not going to make payroll if this account doesn't come in. And then, you know, it was, it was stressful. It's the ups and downs, right? And so I just wanted to make a major change. And, and one of the changes was the cash projections and all that kind of stuff. And we made it, obviously. And then uh, the last one is around kind of leadership, right? How do you transition from an owner of a business to the actual CEO? And I kind of already went kind of through some of those roles, but just to stress them again, set the vision and direction of the business, coach and mentor your leadership team, um, assist sales or the key relationships, know the financials to be the, the face of your company. And that's really all that we did or all I did um, toward that part. And so when you start to get those systems in place, that allows you to scale at a massive level. So it's not all depending on and riding on your shoulders. I love it. I love it. 
That was great, Jason. All right, well, now at that point in the podcast, where we're going to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week. You've given us some great mentoring, but one more, a website, a resource, a book. I know you don't listen to books. Another podcast. <laughs> Anything actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. Jason Swank, what do you got? Well, I would tell you, I mean, we've already mentioned him, but, um, you know, Pat Flynn. So, you know, obviously I have a podcast and that was one of my great things I did in, in growing this particular business. So if you guys haven't started a podcast for a particular audience, you should. I actually took Pat Flynn's free course. Um, so, uh, you know, I would just go to his website and look for the free podcast course. It literally took me two hours to set up and I was like, cool, I'm, I'm ready. And, uh, and go do it. So that would be my action, you know, action item. And I hope you guys do it because there's so many people that just listen and you don't do shit. And um, that really pisses me off. So action leads to transactions. And if, especially if you want passive income, the other thing I'll tell you too, you know, um, make sure you mix the passive income with other income, right? So, you know, in the very beginning, your passive income is going to be very low. So you got to mix it up. I mean, even now, like my passive income is only about like 70% of my business. The rest is 30%. So, you know, it's, um, you got to work your, your butt off. All right. Fantastic. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark. Uh, so we, we, uh, we do a lot with video. You know, we, we do video for our VAs. We do video, you know, we're on video right now uh recording and you know we, we use zoom but i'll tell you there's a new challenger in the marketplace and it's amazon oh i knew you were gonna say it you know what they don't they only host like 16 people no not true not true what let me yeah. see amazon chime so it's chime.aws that's the website chime.aws and they've got three plans the basic plan which is free is two people Oh, chat okay. Room, screen sharing, etc., and then they have the pro plan, which will do video meetings for up to um, up to a hundred people. Personal uh, personal URL meeting URLs, uh, breakout rooms. I mean, Zoom has a breakout room, which I, I use. I use it in flight school. Use it for other things, but um, it, you know, it's a it's another it's another um, Skype competitive if, a competitor, if you will, and. Check it out if you're looking for, if you don't like Skype, if you don't find it reliable. You, do you think this is better than, than Zoom? Is uh, Zoom in trouble? Zoom just raised like $100 million, by the way, from Sequoia. No, I think that, I, I like Zoom. I think that Zoom is really, really good. Uh, you know, one of the things that makes Zoom, I think, better than Skype is the fact that Skype is a peer-to-peer -peer network, meaning that when, when we're all on a call together, we're all using the host bandwidth. Right, it diminishes down to zero, and Zoom is more, um, you know, in the independent. So it's it's um, you connect to the Zoom server, I connect to the Zoom server, Jason's connected to the Zoom server. And I think that that's what makes it stronger, more reliable. But I think that you know, Amazon, and Alexa, they're taking over the world. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, I'll I'll keep a close eye yes. on on Amazon Chime and. Um, you know what? I think this is good though, because it's going to keep zoom sharp, right? Right. It's just going to make them, uh, I think they're already, you know, really, really good, but this is, this is great. So, uh, my oh, tip of the week, oh. go ahead, Jason. No, I wanted to give you one more. I just thought of one that I just sure. started doing about two weeks ago that I don't know why I didn't mention it. Cause it's just crushing it for me. I started using a service called many chat. Oh, I love many chat. And, and the so bot. I, yeah, so it's a Facebook Messenger bot, but I created, I don't have a contact page, so I just send um, it to my um, Jason bot, I call it, and then it goes through a detailed workflow going, hey, do you own an agency? And if you do, then it goes through a number of different logic. If you don't, then it goes through a different logic as well, just so it kind of, kind of puts the people in the right place, and then I can chat with them as well. So you know, I'm literally crushing it on revenue because then people can ask me questions depending on where they're at. So if they're on like a program that they're thinking about, a little pop-up's gonna pop up and say, hey, will this actually work for you? Chat with me. And then it asks them a series of questions that I would normally ask and saying like, hey, what's your revenue? What's your biggest challenge? And then boom. And then we're like, yes, it will work. And then they'll go by. I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, it's so fun. And you know, you know what I like about it, Jason, is that 
you can do these little two minute things on many chat as it's in like, you know, if I'm going to do an email, right. Um, that might take 10 minutes to write where, and then you're like, you're like looking at the blank screen like, Oh, I'm going to write about today. Right. Versus, you know, the bot, you can like do all kind of fun things. You take a picture of yourself and you give them like, you know, it's, it's like gamifying communication in a way because then they can choose. Right. I mean, it's really fun and it's quick to do. Great tip. All right. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about Jason Swank. <laughs> JasonSwank.com and go to the blog. He's got a great blog. So forward slash blog um, and, uh, and learn more there. Also check out the podcast. He's got a podcast page. Jason Swank, W-S or S-W-E-N-K.com. I'll have a link in the show notes. Jason Swank, are we good? We're good, man. Thanks guys for having me on. All right, Scott, it's Todd. I got, I got to tell you though, it's been freaky watching you on your treadmill walk doing the interview. So it's, it's crazy. I've never seen that. So it's the first for everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's funny. I had, I had a, a guest say, you know, don't do that. It makes it, it's not great for me. Uh, the guest watching you on this treadmill kind of walking back and forth. And, um, so I apologize. Well, I just, I just keep laughing. I just think it's the funniest thing. <laughs> it's so different. Which Look, is awesome. I, I got I got to get my 20,000 steps in, man. There you go. Keep you doing know, it. If, if everyone's doing 10,000, I got to do 20,000. That's right. Right. So um, I want to remind everybody to learn more. Uh, go to the landgeek.com. You can download the uh, ebook, how to avoid the three feet of land by mistakes, get the passive income blueprint and get this always informative and engaging podcast over each uh, week to your email inbox and do us a small favor. Look, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Jason Swank is if you just do these three little things, you got to subscribe, you got to rate and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review at support at the land geek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 uh, pass uh, passive income launch kit program. So, um, Scott, you ready for this? Let's go, Mark. All right. One, two, two, three. Let Let freedom ring. ring. Jason's like, oh my gosh, I knew these guys were geeks, but that's just ridiculous. That was awesome. No, it it made me, it made me smile. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks everybody.